All my before meal results from the last month. Before meal averages show me if I'm generally at a good range before I start eating. Hey, if your blood glucose is too high before you eat, it may explain why your after meal averages are high. Oh yeah, I share my averages with Dr. Travers too, so we can talk about changes or adjustments I should make. He says I'll get my A1C to 6.5 if I keep it up. So, food makes your blood glucose rise. How much it goes up all depends on the type of food and portion size. Flagging before meal results on your One Touch Ultra 2 meter lets you review your before meal averages. They'll show you if you're generally in a good range before you eat. Let's talk about carbohydrates. These days you hear a lot about them. Carbohydrates, I call them carbs for short, are the starches and sugars in food. Carbs are digested and converted into glucose. Your diet has to include carbs because your body uses them for fuel. But carbs also raise your blood glucose higher and faster than any other kind of food. So if you have diabetes, it makes sense to have meals that aren't overloaded with carbs. Finding the right portion size of carbs to keep your blood glucose from going too high may take practice. But I have a few pointers to help you get started. Generally, every meal should have 45 to 60 grams of carbs for energy. Of course, it all depends on how your body handles carbs. You'll start to learn this if you try testing before and after meals. A dietitian or diabetes educator can also help you figure out the number of carbs that are right for you. Most people use this method to count carbs. 15 grams of carbohydrate equals one carb choice. So a meal with 45 grams of carbs has three carb choices. A general rule of thumb is three to four carb choices per meal and one to two carb choices for a snack. Try it out. And if you want more help, check out the cute little booklet in the DVD holder. Of course, your physician or dietitian is always a great resource too. Let's recap some details. Foods with carbs raise blood glucose higher and faster than other foods. But don't cut carbs altogether, just mind your portions. When you count carbs, remember 15 grams of carbs equals one carb choice. A meal should have three to four carb choices for energy, and a snack should have one to two carb choices. Food labels are a big help when you start counting carbs. They're printed on all packaged foods, see? Just look for the total carbohydrate line. It shows you the total carbs for one serving. Just remember, this serving is the amount indicated here. It may be smaller than your idea of a serving, so pay attention when you're adding up the carbs in a meal. Sometimes total sugars are shown on food labels, but sugars aren't the only source of carbs, so just use the total carb line when you're counting. Let's compare the total carbs on these two sweetener labels. Next, I'm going to show you how I use my blood glucose meter to see if my food and portion choices are working for me. So, how was it? Ooh, that was good. So now we know that keeping your blood glucose in range is important to your health, and that foods with carbohydrates raise your blood glucose most. But how can you predict how much it'll go up? Dr. Travers told me that testing around meals is a good way for me to see how food affects my blood glucose. I'll show you how. I use my results to see how food choices and portion sizes affect my blood glucose. They help me adjust portion sizes so I can still enjoy the food I love. Remember, the right choice can also be the choice you want. To see the effect of certain foods on your blood glucose, try testing before and two hours after the beginning of a meal. Look at the two results. If your blood glucose is less than 50 points higher two hours after your meal, your food choices and blood glucose are in balance. Good for you. If your result is more than 50 points higher two hours after your meal, try smaller portions of carbs next time. But don't cut all your carbs. Your body needs three to four carb choices at each meal for energy. If your blood glucose doesn't stay in range with these amounts, talk to your physician or diabetes educator. Did you notice my after meal result was higher than 140? I'm still aiming for that goal, but at least I know my food choices are right. Check with your physician to see what target range and testing schedule are best for you. By the way, I'm not stuck with that high reading. I'm going for a walk to bring that result down. Did you know that exercise is an easy way to lower your glucose after a meal? See you in a while.
We covered a lot in this chapter. Testing around meals can show you how specific foods and portion sizes affect your blood glucose, and that can help you adjust portions so you can still include the foods you love. Test just before and two hours after the beginning of a meal. Write both results down. Less than 50 points higher two hours after the meal means your food choices and blood glucose are in balance. If your glucose is more than 50 points higher two hours after your meal, try smaller portions of carbs next time. Now I'm going to show you some simple ways you can start cutting carbs from your meals without feeling deprived. Let's start with breakfast. Most people sweeten their coffee or tea and add sugar to their cereal too. See how fast the carbs add up? A great way to start reducing carbs is by using a low carb sweetener. I use Splenda No Calorie Sweetener. One packet tastes like two teaspoons of sugar, but contains less than one gram of carbohydrate. See the difference? Using Splenda No Calorie Sweetener is a healthy start to reducing carbs to help you stay in range. We've talked about how to adjust carb choices to keep your blood glucose in range. Now let's talk about dessert. Yum! You know, you can add dessert to a meal if you include it in your total carb choice count. Let's say three carb choices for lunch is working for me. To plan for dessert, I adjust the portions of food that are high in carbs like this. So I'll have one last slice of bread in my sandwich, an iced tea sweetened with Splenda no calories sweetener instead of sugary iced tea. Now I have 15 carbs left over. That's one carb choice. That leaves room for a cookie. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, look it. It's two hours after lunch. I'm going to test to see if having that cookie was the right choice. See, my result two hours after lunch is 138. Right on target. Most baked goods are high in carbs. But you can reduce these carbs by baking with a low or reduced carb sweetener like Splenda No Calorie Sweetener instead of sugar. If you're overweight, using Splenda brand products is one way to cut calories. Getting to a healthy weight may improve your body's sensitivity to insulin and reduce the risk of developing complications. There's more information about Splenda products in the booklet in the DVD holder. Check it out. I'm going to get my hair done now. Let's go. You can include dessert in any meal as long as the total carbs are within your carb budget. Remember, that's usually three to four carb choices. Try testing before and two hours after the beginning of a meal to see if your food choices are working. And to reduce carbs in a meal, try using a no-calorie sweetener instead of sugar in drinks and foods. One touch makes everything you need to test your blood glucose. Your One Touch Ultra 2 meter makes testing fast and easy. It just needs a speck of blood and gives results in just five seconds. I love the shape of the One Touch Ultra 2 meter. It's so compact and I can take it with me wherever I go. Learning to include the foods you love and keep your blood glucose in range may take practice. So keep using your One Touch Ultra 2 meter. As you figure out which food and portions work for you, reviewing the averages screens can help reinforce your learning. You may see glucose results gradually improve or spot a change in results that may signal a need to make adjustments to your carbohydrate portions. It's a good idea to write your results in a logbook, too. Oh, see? I had an extra piece of pizza that day. Ah, well, we all slip up sometimes. This keeps me honest with myself. And that's what really matters. When I go see my doctor and diabetes educator, I take my meter with me so they can download my results and we can talk about the next steps. Since I started testing my blood glucose, I have more questions, and our discussions help me manage on my own. I don't feel like I'm just taking orders from the doctor. Well, that's it for now. I hope you learned how simple it is to start managing your diabetes around meals. The key is to use your One Touch Ultra 2 meter and compare your results. I know you'll get the hang of it. If you watched this DVD all the way through, and I hope you did, be sure to review the chapters that contain practical information like carb counting and testing your blood glucose. And don't forget to check out the booklet in the DVD holder. You'll find practical exercises that'll help you with carb counting, portion control, and testing around meals. If you have any questions about any of this information, or you want more educational materials, visit www.lifescan.com or www.splenda.com or ask your healthcare professional. Hey, thanks a lot. Bye for now. For more information or educational materials, visit www.lifescan.com.